Jack and the Baked Beanstalk by Colin Stimson Jack lived and worked in an old burger truck with his mom and his dog Bella. Their sign read, Jack's Fast Food, which was funny because the truck had broken down a long time ago and it had stayed in the same place ever since, parked on the edge of the busy city. Jack and his mom didn't really mind. They were proud of their little cafe. They kept the place clean, served tasty food, and always had plenty of happy customers. One winter, the city council decided to build an overpass so that more people could get to work even faster. The old road where Jack's cafe stood was to be closed. At first, things didn't seem very different. Jack and his mom were busy feeding the builders eggs and sausages, burgers and fries, and cups and cups of coffee. But when the overpass was finally complete, the workers went away. All day long, traffic sped overhead as people hurried in and out of the city. No one stopped to visit the old burger truck anymore. The new road had swept the customers away. Soon, Jack and his mom were down to their last few pennies. Go to the store and buy some milk and coffee beans, Jack, said Jack's mom, putting on a brave face. Everybody likes a good cup of coffee. On his way to the store, Jack met an old man who asked him why he looked so sad. Jack explained about the overpass and his burger truck. I think I can help you, said the old man thoughtfully. Forget the coffee beans. These are magic baked beans. I wouldn't normally sell them, but you look like a boy who would know their true worth. Now Jack had read enough fairy tales to know that you don't turn down an offer like that. Also, baked beans were his favorite food in the whole world, so he couldn't resist tasting some magic ones. Thanking the man, Jack exchanged his last pennies for the beans and ran home. You did what? shouted his mom when Jack showed her the can. But mom, they're magic baked beans. The old man promised, argued Jack, realizing how silly he sounded. Furious, his mom threw the can out of the window and sent Jack straight to bed without any supper. Early the next morning, Jack woke up to find his room bathed in a curious green light. Strange branches twisted in through the window. At the end of each chute dangled a silver can of baked beans. It's a magic baked bean stalk, Jack whispered to Bella, trying not to wake his mother. If I remember right, there should be heaps of treasure at the top. After hurriedly eating a breakfast of the best beans he had ever tasted, Jack crept outside. Are you ready, Bella? said Jack, grabbing hold of a long green tendril. Mom will be worried when she notices we're gone, but if this really is a magic beanstalk, she'll forget about being angry when we bring her back some treasure. Up between the leaves they climbed, high into the sky. Finally, Jack and Bella reached the top, just above the clouds. The last branch wound its way to the steps of the biggest castle Jack had ever seen. Squeezing under the front door, Jack found himself in an enormous room. Suddenly, there was a bone-shaking clunk, then another, and another, followed by the sound of someone singing. Fee! Fi fo fummy, I'm always counting money. Be it silver or be it gold, it'll make me happy, or so I'm told. Sure enough, Jack could see towers of gold coins stacked up in front of a huge table, and behind it, an even more gigantic giant. Oh, whispered Jack, I'd forgotten about that part of the story. But just as Jack and Bella turned to run, the giant spotted them. 
A huge hand reached down and scooped Jack and Bella high up in the air before dropping them on the table. In front of them was the most enormous chicken Jack had ever seen. We have visitors, boomed the giant. So I see, squawked the chicken. And we know just what to do with visitors, don't we? said the giant. Now you stay there. I'll be back in a jiffy. And with that, the giant grabbed a handful of the chicken's eggs and marched off to his kitchen. Soon the sound of clattering pots and pans was making the table tremble. Is he going to eat us, chicken? squeaked Jack. Don't be silly, cackled the chicken. He just wants to make you some lunch. He hasn't cooked for someone new in a long, long time. As Jack watched, the giant switched on an enormous radio. Then, his foot tapping along to the sound of the music, he began to make the biggest omelet Jack had ever seen. While wonderful smells wafted into the room, the chicken told Jack about life in the castle. Every day, all day, the giant counts his money, she clucked. He doesn't know what else to do with himself. It's hard for the radio. She's a magic one, you know. She can only play at lunchtime because the giant needs silence when he's counting. Just then, the giant appeared. Lunch is ready, he cried cheerfully. Over lunch, Jack told the giant all about life at the bottom of the beanstalk. And the giant told Jack about his money. Jack thought having such a treasure was fantastic, but the counting sounded a bit, well, boring. I do get pretty lonely up here, confessed the giant. Would you consider staying? You could help me count, and I could cook us tasty meals. Sorry, said Jack. I just couldn't leave my mom. I should be getting back. Can I come with you? sang a small voice. Jack and the giant turned to the radio in surprise. I want to play songs all day long. And I've always wanted to stretch my wings, clucked the chicken. The giant looked glum, but agreed that his friends deserved a change after all their years in the castle. With a heavy heart, the giant walked them all to the top of the beanstalk. Are you sure you won't come with us? asked Jack. You could chase us. I'd love to, said the giant sadly. But truth be told, I've always been a bit afraid of heights, and it looks like a long way down. I'd better stay up here and count my gold. So Jack and Bella climbed onto the chicken's back, and clutching the radio, began the long journey back to the ground. Goodbye, goodbye, hollered the giant, waving his handkerchief. Do come again soon. But as he leaned out over the beanstalk, trying to catch a last glimpse of his friends, there was suddenly a loud crack. Snap went the beanstalk, and down, down, down fell the giant. Crash, bang, wallop, right on top of the new overpass. Cars skidded in all directions, but fortunately no one was hurt. Are you all right? asked Jack, who had luckily reached the ground just in time. No, said the giant, as a gigantic tear splashed onto the concrete below, then another and another. Now that the beanstalk's broken, I can't go home, and without my money to count, I've got nothing to do. Whatever will become of me? It isn't so bad, said Jack thoughtfully. At least you're with your friends. Maybe if you try doing something you enjoy, you'll find it more fun than counting money. And that is the story of how the Baked Beanstalk Cafe became the famous place it is today. It's much bigger than the old place in almost every way. If you're ever passing through, do stop in. Say hello to the giant chicken, 
or listen to the jumbo radio that plays music all day. The baked beans and eggs are always free, and to top it all, they have a very, very famous cook. In this retelling of a classic fairy tale, Jack is an entrepreneur, someone with the vision, courage, and hard work ethic to turn a good idea into a business. He took a chance on a can of magic baked beans, his favorite snack, and it paid off big time. Working together with his mom and his new friends, Jack was able to save the family business. But how did those beans turn into a giant beanstalk? Let's find out. If you can't find any magical baked beans at your nearest grocery store, just use some regular dried beans. Place them in a cup of water and let them soak overnight, or at least for a few hours. Soaking the beans in water wakes them up to start the germination process. Look at the change in the beans after they have been soaked. The soaked pinto bean looks more than twice as large as the dried one on the left. And the soaked lima bean is gigantic compared to the dried one on the right. Even the tiny lentils have grown bigger than when they started. These beans are full of stored energy, enough to grow a whole new plant. What do you think? Do they look magical yet? Time to sprout. Take a soaked paper towel, fold it, and put it into a plastic bag. Then gently add in your beans. Spread them out evenly and keep them at least a centimeter above the bottom of the bag. Some water will pool here and you don't want them submerged. Pinch the edges of the bag closed, but leave the center open at least a finger width to allow airflow. These beans have everything they need to grow into beautiful bean stalks. Water, oxygen, and light. Tape your beans to the window and add the last magical ingredient. Time. After about the first day, you'll see a tiny root starting to grow from the bean. This root will help the plant take in water and nutrients, so the bean uses all of its stored energy to grow it longer and longer. You can watch your beans growing on the windowsill like this for a few days or up to two weeks. Just keep adding little drops of water if you notice the paper towel getting dry. Did you know that magic beans have a sense of direction? No matter which way the bean is facing, the root will always grow down. And the stem of the bean, which would become the bean stalk, will always grow up. If you plant your sprouted beans in damp soil with water and sunlight, you can grow your own bean stalk. Isn't that magical? For more information about receiving STEAM kits in the mail, visit the Kids and Families page at coosbaylibrary.org.